Chapter 5. Enemy at the gates. Is this gonna be the attack on Zalfu? This music. Whoa. <laughs> so cool. Contact President Raiko. He'll send the United Forces. I mean, you knew this was coming, though, no? Call whomever you want, but they'll never make it in time. Kavir's yeah. already here, and she brought her entire army. Yeah. She's got a lot of mech warriors. By this time tomorrow, my mother will have signed our treaty, and the Earth Empire will finally be united. This guy. This is his home. But I guess he's not counting on them to attack. He thinks that Su Yin is just gonna sign the city over. Who do you choose? Your mother and city or your girlfriend? What would I do if my girlfriend was a city conqueror? My girlfriend somehow ended up in a position to conquer New York. I might side with her, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a human being. Zhao Fu stopped being my home long ago. Oh, well I guess he's made I'm up his mind. To take it by force. Okay. <laughs> Milo, there's not gonna be a fight. What? No fight? <laughs> Why did we go through all that trouble to save you if you're not going to beat someone up? Fair point. Fair point. Okay, I'm Varric of Varric Industries International, and this is Spirit Vine Experiment 3-02. What are they working on? I have postulated that these spirit vines are a form of pure energy that's unstable in what we call typical Earth conditions. What is this, like some form of nuclear energy or something? It's registering five barracks of power. Now seven barracks! Oh, what is this? That's a lot of barracks. Oh no, Julie! Julie, shut it down! There are too many barracks! <laughs> they accidentally created the most powerful weapon on Earth. <laughs> oh. Okay. You saved me. Of course I saved you. I can't clean this place up by myself. No. What if it fell into the wrong hands? Since when does that matter to you? I know, it's not like me, right? Yeah. There's this nagging voice in my head constantly telling me what's right from wrong. No, you gotta stamp that out. That's no good. That's no fun. Merrick is above morality. He doesn't need to have these petty concerns of normal mortals. So far he's kind of told the line and nothing he's done has been so egregious. It would be a great feeling if he actually became like, you know, a really solid person. Well, I'm the other voice in your head and I'm telling you, you will continue this project. Sorry, no. I just mm. really gotta stand my ground on this one. Whoa! Good for him. I'll work on the project. Please don't drop me. It was a good effort. Standing his ground though. I appreciate that. Now you pissed Julie off so it's all over. Asami, you came. Oh, is that her dad? It is. I never want to see or hear from you again. I tore our family apart and destroyed our good name. But in a life of regret, you're the one thing I look back on that makes me smile. I just, you are the greatest thing I ever created. And she was pretty great. That was good. That was good. Am I oh, in no. trouble? He's just caught in the middle. Inner circle? No way! Yes! <clears throat> Aren't all these troops gonna send the wrong message? The army is here to project strength. You're here to present peace. It seems like Bolin can feel something's not right. But it's hard because he has so much momentum. And he really wants to believe. He's really set on this vision that he's helping people. It's really hard once you feel like you're in the right to actually take stock in the facts around you and think that you, you may not be seeing things clearly. It's hard to take in new information, you know. It's exhausting. If you are a critical thinker and you really want to get to the truth, it just seems like there's an endless amount of things to consider. And... Sometimes I feel like the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. And so when you find something that makes you feel good, it can it's really easy to like settle there and just stay like, I'm a good person and I'm doing things for the good. And from that, it's easy to turn other people who disagree with you into enemies and to justify all sorts of things. And Bolin is such a sweet soul. Like he really wants the best thing to happen, but he's kind of caught here. He's stuck. I'm really interested to see how this turns out for him and how far along he'll go before opening his eyes. Opal, you're here too. No, you've chosen your side. Sides? There shouldn't be sides. <laughs> I sympathize so strongly with Bolin, and I think it's a mistake thinking that he's being naive. I mean, he is being naive, but there also is truth to what he's saying. He's just not able to articulate it in a way that's meaningful to them. I'm just, I'm Bolin. Like, I want them to just communicate, and I want Bolin to be included in the conversation. Sue, I didn't bring my army to threaten you. I wanted to show you all that your son and I have accomplished. And also to threaten you. You belong here. Why? so that I can go on living in your shadow. Can't you see she's brainwashed you? Mm. <laughs> okay, guys, 
obviously there's a lot of personal painful history here so what do you say we just all forget about that stuff huh i mean that's the past so that was an interesting thing from so Yin Sun, this is a personal thing for him about getting out of his father's shadow. And it's like, you know, going back to previous episodes, when you find out what someone's afraid of, you, you're best able to control them. And Kuvira has found out what he's afraid of. He's afraid of living an empty life. He's afraid of not making his mark on the world. And so she has gotten her hooks in him. But it is true that that's his decision. She's not creating something that isn't already there. He has that in him. And she's just she just found it and brought it to the surface. So he knows what he's doing. This is not brainwashing. And Bolin is getting at that. He's like, yeah, this is based on pain in the past. He's just saying it in a very flippant way that doesn't match the situation. Now I'm a Bolin fanboy somehow. Right wing, right way. You guys know what I'm talking about. High five. He's trying. He's trying. And the future is bright. Let me tell you. I've seen it. Yeah. Saw it last month. We went to this town that had nothing. Citizens are forced to work as slave labor. You have 24 hours to agree to join the Empire or we take the city by force. Yeah, that was gonna happen no matter what. When people don't cooperate, we must find other ways of convincing them to join. How many times have we used these other ways in the past? There you go. What does happen to all those towns and villages after we leave? There you go. Maybe I'm not really an inner circle kind of guy. There you go. Maybe you need to spend some time in a re-education camp. I thought that's where we send people to learn new trade skills. <laughs> Hard truths, Bolin. I'm totally on your side. Completely, 100% loyal. Yeah, so you gotta have some faith in Bolin. He's gonna do the right thing. Three years ago, after the fall of the Earth Queen, Raiko and Tenzin came to see me. I'm not interested in imposing my ideals on an entire nation. Zafu has always been a beacon of modern progress, and now you can share that with everyone. It's interesting that it's framed in the same way that Ozai framed it, or Sozin framed it, I guess, which is, you know, like, we have prosperity. It's our right to spread it with the rest of the world, or in this case, the Earth Kingdom. Kuvira and Batar left that day with Varric, my security force, and a few of Zafu's wealthiest citizens. It's quite a loss. Remove Kuvira from power once and for all. Fighting is something the old me would do. That always made things worse. Let me talk with Kuvira. Maybe wow. I can reason with her. Kuvira doesn't listen to reason. Yeah, it's probably true. But doesn't hurt to try, right? Or does it? There's something important I gotta tell you too. Kuvira's crazy! <laughs> How'd you find out? When I refused to build her a super weapon, she threatened my life! She threatened me too, and she's threatening Zafu, and it turns out she's been threatening villages this whole time. There you go. This is an unstoppable team right here. I'm here to ask you to back down. Please, take your army and leave. I think we both know that's not going to happen. But for Kuvira, Korra is the one person or one thing that could potentially stand in her way, right? She was pretty flippant about that. I guess she's counting on the weapon? The world was descending into chaos while you were gone. In order to fix it, I had to make some tough decisions. I know what that's like. Go back to Sue and try to talk some sense into her. Maybe that will be for the best. She doesn't want to be reduced to being like a messenger between the two warring sides. That's no good. It's beneath her role as the Avatar. Okay, I say we go up and around the mountains and sneak into Zafu from the rear. We'll be helping by warning the world about Kuvira's potential super weapon. That's helping, but it's a completely different type of helping. Hmm, let me think about this. <laughs> Oh, what the heck? Nice! Hell yeah! Mech Warrior Battle. <laughs> what is he doing? Whoa, Julie, doing the thing. Yeah, I feel like lava bending is probably a better option here. Or earth bending. This is so cool. I love Varric and Julie being in on the action. Yes, there it is. That's a care of that. Stop. Turn yourself over. <laughs> Varric's face. When I saw you, it wasn't anger I felt. It was sadness. I want to make amends. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to forgive you, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't try. I thought we could play some pie show. Nothing would make me happier. 
I like this Asami sub-story. Asami is such a good character, but I feel like she's sometimes underused in the show. Like, she's such a good person. She's so ta smart, talented. She deserves some, some closure with her father. I've said this before, and I believe it. I think that when you are wronged by someone, we feel as though we take the, the biggest hit. But I think that long-term, the person who really carries the burden is the person who did those things. You, as someone who has experienced bad things, you can come to terms with that. You know, there are ways to conceptualize that where you realize that you are not at fault. You acted honorably in the situation and you can move on. But the person who has who has done those things has to live with that stain on their conscience that they were capable of those things and they hurt people that cared about them and, and those things haunt you. So it's cool that Asami is recognizing in a sense that it's sad. Her father is just in this state that he can never probably fully recover from. Like there's no need to exacerbate or deepen those wounds if it's not necessary. Please, have mercy on me. Don't send me away. Take me back. Why would I? Because my only mistake was being loyal to the wrong person. Yeah, right. Compared to you, Varric's a fool. Hey, come on. I'm right here. <laughs> I believe in everything you've done, and I believe in your vision. Can you convince the great convincer? Kavira's pretty good. Rise, Julie. I'll give you another chance. I did everything you ever asked of me, and you never appreciated it. Guards, do the thing. <laughs> She's good. Where's Sue? I have to talk to her. She's not here. She took wing and way. They're going to sneak into Kavira's camp and put an end to this. Whoa. No. No, what the heck? That episode was five seconds long. Are you kidding me? All right, that's the end of this episode, I guess. Before the video ends, I gotta give a very special shout out to everyone who joined the Goodwin Fruit Squad on Patreon. Special shout out goes to Tanner Moore and Spoon. Thank you to you and to all patrons and to everybody who continues to support the videos. Love you guys. See you tomorrow for the next episode.